why am I playing a towel? I used to play D drum. I, I play all, I'll play anything. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, when it comes down to, you know, it's all good. They're all good drums. Yeah. If, if, any drummer knows that if you, if you know anything about drums. Yeah. They, yeah. They're sure they got their own look, character, hardware, all the stuff that comes with it. But drums are drums to a guy like me. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah. You know, they're just drums, man. You know, no problem. I'll make them sound good and don't worry about it. I'll, and I'll play. You want to hear my stuff, what I do? I'll play them on it. You mean? Hello, everybody. This is Dane Campbell. This is another episode of Drum for the Song podcast. And today's guest is the fantastic Rob Reiner of thrash metal, heavy metal, rock, pioneers, Anvil. I'm very blessed to have him on today. How are you doing, Rob? Good, Dane. How are you, man? I'm pretty good, actually. Yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah, very you're much. Good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, ready to talk some shit yeah <laughs> let's do it let's do it but yeah appreciate you coming on um i believe you might be my first ever canadian guest i think is that right yeah i might be wrong but i think i think you are so how um you're based around the toronto area is that correct yeah yeah nice. i'm in toronto canada nice. i still live here i still live here <laughs> you, but you born there as well yeah yeah awesome awesome yeah i'm i'm, I'm a canadian uh but i'm hungarian background guy Ah. My parents are my parents are from Hungary. Ah, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Ah, but, I'm, cool. but I'm Canadian. I was born yeah. here. Nice. Yeah, I, I've I've been lucky enough to be to uh, I've been to Toronto for a few days with my wife. It was lovely, and we went to the Algonquin National Park for a few days. Oh, really? You were up at Algonquin? A few a few years ago. Yeah, it was beautiful. Wow, amazing, amazing place. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't know. You lived, serious, I didn't know much about you then, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, there's lots of serious uh, nature uh, here. Yeah. Lovely, lovely yeah. place. I can understand why you want to stay there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I still, I could have, I, you know, I've been everywhere in the world and I've still maintained living here. Awesome, awesome stuff. Well, that that, yeah. that tells you something. Um, but yeah, let's just get started then. So for anyone that lives on another planet and doesn't know about Anvil, uh, we'll okay. talk a little bit about the <laughs> band. Um, like from my understanding, I've, you know, I've heard a few albums. I've seen the movie. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, obviously, you you started as a band in the the late seventies, I believe. Um, 70, uh, 78, yeah, seventy eight. Yeah, there you go. So uh, way before my time, I was born in eighty six. But uh, yeah, hey, that took my yeah. So you're as old as my son Tyler. He was born in eighty six too. Ah, cool. So he goes he goes the same age. And I've got a brother who's called Tyler. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, he, and he's also a drummer too. <laughs> ah, cool. Oh, How's that? <laughs> very cool. Oh, well, I'll have to check him out. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about it later. Yeah, yeah, cool. Right, so, yeah, so, so what, well, like, I can imagine what it, what already existed then. So you already would have had bands like Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin just about existing? Sure, yeah, yeah, no, well, Zeppelin already uh, broke up um, after uh, John Bonham died. Yeah. I think it was around 77. Right. Okay. So I, I, I maybe, maybe maybe you could check, but I think around then it was a good few years later than that. Then okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, a, yeah we're from the late seventies, uh, basically. Mm, so this is when, and then I guess you were one of the bands that started making the faster kind of metal. With that, I guess yeah, yeah, influenced was, the thrash movement. I think by the sounds yeah. of it. At that in its day, there was no titles for that stuff. You know what I mean? It yeah. was like for for Lips and myself, it was like. Deep purple music, just done hyper. Nice. Oh, that's cool. But that's, <laughs> okay, like that. Like that's all it was in our terminology then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's no, interesting you know, to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, like we'll take like you know, machine head kind of groove, but let's put double bass drum feel to that. Amazing. Like, that's kind of like all it was really in its day. We had no titles to say, "Oh, this is going to be speed metal, heavy metal." You know, I'm not much about that, anyways. But yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. It all started innocently. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. And then, from a drum perspective, I am. I, I can tell by watching you. You've obviously got a bit of a jazz influence as well. Mm. But what oh, yeah. what what were the kind of drummers at the time that influenced you specifically, especially with the like the double bass drum kind of style? I don't like how many. How much did that exist before Anvil started? Oh, it, it existed uh, to some level, um, but the old like I grew up a Ginger Baker. 
I, I don't know the cream guy um with the double bass drum thing um from rock but he was a jazz he's a jazzy drummer also you know what i mean yeah um there was uh who else and when i was a kid uh, there was the uh, buddy there what's his name again um carm uh carmine apathy oh, of course yeah 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 carmine was another guy that uh kind of but then with the jazz guys there really wasn't too much double bass drum with jazz guys it was, it was all about snare drumming really and, and yeah and accent and accents so i really grew up with that stuff you know what i mean cool also but uh, i'd say ginger baker had to be the guy when i was a kid yeah nice nice no i was i was wondering because i it's difficult for me to put everything in a timeline yeah. Before I was but, born, but i'm trying my best to learn <laughs> yeah yeah you know what you should go back and listen to the those early early original cream records yeah i've heard some of them actually yeah yeah oh yes yeah, so, amazing, oh, amazing stuff and amazing. just check out you know it's just three guys so they, i'm sure they were fucking stoned and, and they're just jamming man and and, and they're capturing amazing stuff yeah yeah oh that and you that, uh, produced so much great music yeah yeah so that i grew up with that that was the kind of shit i grew up with you know, yeah, I, I grew up with Black Sabbath too, but there wasn't too much double bass drumming in that. You know what I mean? No, there wasn't. No, and, and obviously no, yeah. Zeppelin, it was not. Yeah, yeah, but it was. It was felt. It was grooved. You know, I loved it all. And same with Uri Heep. I love. I love Uri Heep. Oh yeah, amazing. There's another band. Yeah. All those yeah. great English bands, man. They're all great. Deep Purple too. Uh, you know, the whole Sweet, the Sweet Slade. Yeah. Yeah. So you say not ba- it's not double bass drum stuff so much, but no. So you must have like, I guess implemented that into your style with anvil to some degree yeah you know, you know a, lot, a lot lot of all of anvil's stuff is derived from those inspirations nice nice in in our minds yeah yeah <laughs> you know what i mean i don't know if people can pick up on little things or not but in our minds that's what it was yeah cool you know oh man that's a cool riff man okay let's let's do like a sweet beat to it or like you know like whatever you know like kids we're you know we're we're, we're kind of still like that even though we're a little bit more educated with what we're doing <laughs> yeah that's cool man um did, did you have a drum teacher yourself who taught you how to play yeah uh, yeah yes uh, did i was, it, was i taught or did i teach well yeah were you taught did someone teach you yeah yeah yes i did yeah i did uh-huh. as a kid um yeah um i was punk uh, all those i was very young i was like 11 years old i think and the whole deal with my mother at the time was, you know, if you're going to buy you some drums and you're going to do all this, you really got to learn how to play these things properly, not just, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I studied for seven years with a private teacher. Ah, cool. Yeah. I, I played I out of the, yeah, I played out of the books uh, of the day. Um, and it, it was been a very beneficial, you know, you really to learn how to play snare drum. Yeah, that's what I understand. And there was lots of books and famous books. That this is stuff yeah. I, I haven't done and I wish I had yeah, when I was yeah, younger. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. well, it's not, you know what, Ben? It's never too late. Yeah, dude. it is. Yeah, you're right. It's never too late. Yeah. You just right. got to say to yourself, going, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of uh, catching up a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's, it's beneficial to your playing. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's not that you got to go crazy in all these songs. You know, you gotta, I'm all about taste. Play yeah. with taste. Yeah. Oh, totally. And, the, you know, this podcast is called Drum for the Song. Uh, I I try right, to right. glorify drummers that I think do that, and are not just yeah, people who show yeah. off constantly. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, you're saying I got you, man, and that's yeah. really where it's at. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. Play tasty, man. Play for the song, but you know if it if it fits at that moment, you know, do some little cool, little tasty thing, and it'll stand out like like hmm. beautifully, right? Yeah, it helps it helps the music along. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So um. So you know, in the in the eighties, I think that's when the band started kind of getting some good shows and some good tours and and festivals and things like that. Do you have any specific memories or favorite tours or festivals from uh, that era? Oh man. Oh uh, well, I guess uh, I guess I could. What comes to mind is playing Donington. Yeah. In uh, eighty two, it was one of the. It's the second. It was one of the early ones. I don't know. It was the first, second. I don't think it was more than the third one at the, in its day. I can't remember. It was, yeah, it was. There was a few before it changed the name. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just know the, it was that one. It was the early one. And what I remember about it was we've never played in front of that many people yet ever in our lives. Wow. You know, we came from playing like clubs and whatever. Yeah. And it was like you know, let's go to the UK and hey man, we're gonna play this big, huge, legendary festival. It's gonna be like seventy thousand people. You know, that was all the and it was. And we were the first band on. Nobody, you know, nobody fucking knew who we were, technically, right? Right. 
And uh, what I remember about it is watching uh, who's, uh, before he went on, the whole stage was covered in fucking mud and grass and, and piss bottles and uh, like like all kinds of shit was already all over the whole stage, right? You mean? Gross, gross, gross. Yeah. And, and, then, and then randomly, once in a while, you saw something still fly up, boom, man. And I'm going, oh, he, just hit my, he just hit my drum kit. This is fucking great. We got to go do this. So I was like sitting there going, wait, wait, we got to go and fucking do this. <laughs> So that that's pretty. That was a pretty uh, memorable moment. But what happened was that was all normal. To our to our learnings, you know, we found out. Oh, well, that's that's just an everyday event here, and or it was at that time, anyways. And yeah. and the more shit that they throw at you, the more they like you. <laughs> it's weird. It's very strange. Yeah. So so it's it's like if nobody's throwing shit at you, man, you guys should just be bombing. Get off the stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, and we're going, and we we're just going, what the fuck is going on? This is the UK. So that's one of my memories from back then. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. No, I bet it was amazing. Um, yeah, legendary festival, legendary place. It still is yeah. now. It's called the Download Festival now. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's a lot bigger, more stages. Yeah, way more bands. It's more, it's a corporate thing these days for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit, definitely a big deal, but that's amazing, man. And then, um, yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, the, the the one thing in the, the start yeah, of the... The documentary, in case anyone's not seen it, Anvil, the story of Anvil, it starts off with some footage of you playing in Japan, which looked amazing. Um, yeah, that was back uh, in 84. That was 84. Okay, this is me getting that right. So that, that like the way they p portray it in the documentary is that all the bands that you were playing with on that bill ended up being really huge. But unfortunately, you know, Anvil didn't quite get to the level of those bands and it's a story of you um touring europe in i think the early 2000s i, I know i advise anyone to check that, that movie out if you haven't already to learn more about rob and anvil but um how you know during that time how like i believe it's your old drum tech was the director and he uh, approached you about making yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah. Kind of, yes uh, yeah that's pretty somewhat true yeah that's pretty cool yeah, he's uh, uh, I can give you a fact. You want to hear the backstory to all that? Yeah, well, yeah, please. Yeah, okay. So, the backstory to that is quick. Uh, we were, we were, there's a club in England in the UK called the Marquee Club in London, yeah, right? Yeah, and we play, and we had we had a few nights there back in uh, 82 or 83. And uh, Sasha, the, the fellow you're talking about, he was a Anvil fan, he's a drummer also, but he's a he's just an Anvil fan, right? And uh, he came to the gig, and uh, backstage there, there's a little teeny room. This, you know, all these guys from Maiden, all these rocks, other to be rock star guys were kind of hanging out. Whatever, I can't remember who was all there, Def Leppard, even or whatever. And uh, this kid comes into the dressing room. <laughs> He's like a kid, man. He was 15 years old, I believe, and his name was Sasha, right? He's going, man, I, you know, like he was just glowing in a different energy than. Like your normal fan, there's something different. Is you know, do you mean by that? He's just we could sense that there's something different about this guy. I don't know what it was, but he's some. So we invited him and said, "Hey, come on in, kid. Sure, man." And we and we just became friends. Cool. Like like there, and he, then he told us all by himself. Then we tripped around London, went Carnaby Street, uh, Camden Town, all these places. We were tripping everywhere, and we just kind of became friends. And then a year or two later, we asked him if he here in Canada hey man you want to come on the road and you want to like you know help out and, you know there's one of those kind of things right yeah yeah I, know, I understand yeah yeah and then he did and he started putting drums together packing them clean cymbals you know like kind of learning a little bit about all that but traveling and and that's how that's really what happened and then we lost contact with him after about seven years I don't know seven years or so later after all this stuff, then he kind of just disappeared, and no, we didn't know how to find him. Nobody knew how to find him. It was like, what happened to that guy? Yeah, yeah. It was like, what, it was like, what happened to this guy? Right? <laughs> and 25 years goes by, and Lips and myself were always, you know, off and on, whatever happened to Sasha, man? We always thought about him endlessly, right? Just like, you know, whatever happened to that kid, you know? Yeah. And like 25 years later, we get an email. Now it's like, you know, 25 years later, you get this email. And it's from Tim. Crazy. And he, yeah, I swear to God, he goes, hey, man, like, uh, you guys remember me, man? Like, uh, I hope uh, you guys read this. And it's one of those kind of emails, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was it. And then we we reconnected. 
and he just and then to... uh, and he happened to be at that point. I am in Hollywood. I'm a I'm a big time a screenplay writer guy. You know, like I work with Spielberg. I do. You know, he was like all this. Like holy fuck, man. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you were like a, a kid all fucked up. You know what I mean? Right? <laughs> and like now he's like all this. And uh next before next thing you know, he's going he's telling us guys, hey man, you know, I want to maybe make a movie. Some I want to help you guys. I, I don't know, I don't know what I can do. He goes, I don't even really know what I can do, but uh, let's make a movie. We'll make some kind of a movie, right? It was like just that organic, like amazing. Came out of nowhere. It was like one minute we were just doing this, the next minute, okay, now we're going to do this. And the only person at the time, out of all of us, that really saw the uh, end game of it was Lips. Yeah. Like you know, like like I didn't. For me, it was like at the at the time, it was like, well, we're Anvil, but you know, who who fucking knows about us? You know, I mean, that, that was my thought all the time, right? Like, right. it's cool, but we're not famous nobody knows who the fuck we are right and uh so why would anybody give a shit about this movie that was kind of my attitude okay. being being realistic i guess yeah right? yeah more yeah like a, a like a realistic pessimistic kind of view. yeah i wasn't i wasn't really down on it but i was just taking like you know it's pretty like like math you know one and one is two yeah not three but that was but i was negative about it i just didn't okay. see the fucking vibe, but Lips saw it right away. And Lips goes, "Man, this thing's gonna be the biggest thing. This is gonna change the every." He goes, "This thing's gonna change the world, man." Amazing. Like, like he went, like, yeah, he was on this other trip, right, right from the beginning, going, "Man, you don't got, you don't get it, man. Like, this is gonna be blah blah." He was going on and on and on, right. So, anyways, he was absolutely right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fuck so was like, he, fuck yeah, was so he right? I mean, yeah. So uh, it, I remember when it came out and. It was a combination of like my I how old were I? I would have been I don't know twenty or something. So I wasn't particularly old, and I, yeah, I I knew about the band. I heard the name, but didn't know anything about the band. Yeah, Until sure, the mo sure. Movie comes out, everyone sure. watches the movie. Says, "Oh, like it is a great movie in itself, regardless about what it what it's about. It as just the story that it tells is incredible. Yeah, absolutely, and, and it's that's it's, very true." Funny parts. It's it's really well edited. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Sad um, parts, emotional parts. Yeah, and you you feel you know, for sure. even if it was yeah. if it was fiction, it would still be great. But it, but you know, no, it's not. It's, it's not. No, it's nonfiction. Yeah, sorry. The other way. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, the other way around. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, yeah. yeah. No, no. The thing that that that's fucking movie was completely real. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry, that's what I mean. Sorry. I, yeah, 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 I yeah. Mean, it was, yeah, it was real in real time, and everything that you everybody saw was what happened legit yeah legit legit and you can tell like Lip, lips has got this dream in it and and the special bond that between you two especially you you get that just by watching the movie so yeah yeah yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're we're like brothers from our, uh another mother that's about it you know yeah we, it seems like, like that. you know yeah he's i've never had a brother in my life like so-called brother uh and he has brothers that he has no relationship with Ah. Like well, one's passed away now, but when when everybody was around, it, it was he still felt like he had no brother. So, so I, I guess that's why we kind of yeah, so I'm his brother. Ah, nice. Yeah, you can tell that it's really nice and yeah. it seems really genuine. And but that's obviously my take, that's my take on it. These yeah, days. <laughs> no, good, good. And I hope he's well as well. I'm, I know my my dad sends his wishes. Um, yeah, well wishes. Well, yeah. I'll, tell, you, I'll, 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 I'll tell him that. I'm you guys. Soon. Yeah, please do later. Yeah. So um, hey, man, I, I smoked lots of fucking hash with your dad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sure you yeah, did. Like, yeah, no, oh, yeah, man. I've, uh, I can, we, I can, <laughs> we can talk about that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. I've been going to morning and gigs, and there's your dad in his fucking room, man. He's got a big chunk of ash because the kid boys, you know, let's roll some out there. Is, uh, stuff, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. It's weird how things have, how things have changed. He's yeah. uh he's, in these days, he's completely clean cut now, man. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's, 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 he's got it. Well, that's understandable. Yeah, he's, he's turned that's, around, you know. But, uh, yeah, but I mean. Smoking powder hash is is not really so toxic, anyways. Well, it's that you've you've written a whole album about the legalization of it and all that, haven't you? I noticed. Well, not not a whole album, but, oh, but uh, the title. Uh, yeah, we called an album to do with that in here in Canada. Like, see, so, yeah, the whole country. We went. Uh, they went legal with it here, uh, a bunch of four, four or five years ago. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like, but it's not just. It's all across the country, so it's yeah. everywhere. That's One cool. time, bang. And yeah, you just, just those uh, the shops here, and 
Nothing's changed, but, but all, you know, it's all, all that's changed is you can have the stuff and you won't get in trouble with it. You won't get in trouble for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's cool. what's changed. Every house is exactly the fucking same, man. Nothing's changed. Well, that's, that's good to know for, yeah, for other true. countries that are considering it. Yeah. And America's going, you know, they're catching up. They're, they're really trying to do the same thing. Yeah. I it's stupid. Man. It, the whole thing's stupid anyway. So whatever. That's another, that's yeah, another yeah, story. Yeah, it's not really for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's another story. But, look, but yeah, the movie obviously um, put you in the spotlight to like, millions of potential people. How how did the career the career of the band change after the movie? Was uh, it, it a dramatic? It changed. Yes, yeah, it was too. Yeah, no question about it. It's like a rocket ride for the band. Yeah, in, in our career, well, all that it did is it, it, it employ- gave us full time employment. Great, and that's what you you've always wanted. Yeah, you know, right? like yeah, they, yeah, that's yeah. Well, you're absolutely. We have that. You know, uh, we've been very fortunate to uh, make a living from the band. Let's since, since then, it's great. Yeah, we, we the band is our day job. That's amazing because yeah. the, another the band part is of the, the day. Yeah. The, yeah, it is. That's it's our fucking shitty day job, and I love it. There aren't any better jo- jobs than being in a rock band. <laughs> that's pretty cool. No, especially when you can eat, pay bills, and have a good life. You know it's not about becoming a millionaire if it happens or you get there that's cool whatever but it's you know it's better than pumping gas all day or something you know what I mean? yeah well exactly and, and at the in the film they talk about the your day jobs and especially lips's day jobs that he tried and they highlight right. that and yeah and, and, and yeah so it's an, it's amazing that it did make that difference to your life and it was yeah, so yeah so, yeah so so that has yeah yeah that's an honest uh fantastic uh, that's yeah it, we've been making a living from the music for 15 years since then that's amazing yeah, yeah. good and our in our newer records all these later records the ones that we've been making are um our fan favorites to like high levels yeah. yeah they go back a lot of people go back and find all the old other stuff hear me mm. but the new stuff is becoming more fan favorites yeah well i, I listened to the the new track ghost shadow yeah, yeah, recently, right, yeah, and that it blew me away. It was fantastic. So you've got a new album coming out called Impact is Imminent on yeah, the yeah. May the twentieth. So yeah, that's right. That's right. I, yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I got a CD here. I can show you. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> no, it's, nice. it's cool that you've got the physical physical copy already. But um, yeah, I was uh, able to uh, get one. Uh, I, I don't know if I can reach and get it. I'm plugged in. It's over there in the closet. Okay, no, nah, never mind. Yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, well, yeah. There's a new album that's coming out, and uh, that song is it's been received uh, from. Uh, I get these reports from uh, the people who talk to me. It, it's doing great. Yeah, and like yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, you know, we thought it was a, a strong song, anyways, um, all along. But I guess the people f- look like they're digging it too. Uh, absolutely. So, what should people expect from the album in full? It's more, uh, you know, to me, it's, I don't know, to me, Amble's Amble. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been saying that forever. It's like Motorhead's Motorhead, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, you know what you're getting, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, got, it's got the style, it's got the sound. You're going to hear those same things that you know the band for. Cool. Um, maybe the productions, uh, you know, the productions, are, in our case, I believe, are improving. Yeah, definitely. I've noticed that. You know, we know, we, yeah, yeah, it's all real right. stuff. You know, we really play, you know, there's no, um, it's a real band. Those yeah. recordings... It's a real band playing for real. Amazing, proper. You know, it's, you know, it's not like you know, uh, digitally chopped together or whatever. They, you know, we really do. The, we really play this stuff like for do real. You, you know, do we, you play live in the studio? Then is that what you mean? Or do yeah, you mean? Yeah, that's, yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's really. Oh, that's really. That's really cool, man. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Do you, do you use yeah, a click off, track or anything? No, never. Oh wow, we've never. We've never played with a click. Never ever. Wow. Yeah, never. And it's to the point now where we've dabbled with it, but. It, it, it always gets thrown out. It's like, yeah, that, there's no, dude, it's fucking shit, man. What, what happened to the feeling? The feelings, God, man, what's going on? You know? Yeah, I've, I've got, I've, I've had many um, conversations on the show, the mixed opinions of whether click is good or bad, and it depends. I think it depends on the situation, absolutely. But um, I, I certainly feel that rock and roll and rock music sometimes is better without. And um, well, you know, if you're a good player, okay, look, like, yeah. Let's just go for you know. I guess the level for good, good, uh, good experienced players, you know, that have natural feel and stuff. Mm. They can keep it pretty close to being good and steady. Yeah. Anyways, and moving around a little bit is what makes it so good. Yeah, and sometimes you need to move it around. Yeah, that's the good stuff. 
and this is what all this technology, you know, some of it sucked all that honest good stuff out of out of the stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do. It, I do feel and it doesn't. That way. And it doesn't. Same with sample. You know, like similar, like you know, putting those sample sounds on and this and that. You know, what's wrong with a true acoustic fucking kick-ass snare drum? You know what I mean? I know. To me, no, I agree. I agree. <laughs> you know what I mean? As opposed to let's fucking fatten it up or do this with some, you know, fake shit and do that and whatever. Stick someone else's snare drum on top. Yeah, 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 exactly. And all that. Now that's your sound. And it's like, oh, whatever. Fuck. So what? You know, like yeah. I've never gotten off on that. No, I'm, I'm not into it. I know it's been done to some of the stuff I've played on. And it, it, it just, as an artist and as a creative person, I just feel like, well, it's just taking me away from that yeah. recording. That wasn't yeah. me. And that's not yeah. my, my gear. Right. Yeah. And I, I you're absolutely right, man. Yeah, it's a shame. Like so, it might it might sound good. Yeah, right. Whatever good means, but it's not yeah, right. It's not me. <laughs> yeah, it's not the real deal. And yeah, well, Anvil, we're known as the real deal. Everybody says that to us to this day constantly, whoever we meet, you know. Great. Musicians angry go, Oh, you guys are the real deal. You mean like yeah. you, you, know, just, you guys really you guys really do it for real, everything about you. But it's natural. It, it just feels right. You know, like with producers, you know, they don't want us to make our music super perfect. Cool, that's good. Because a lot of producers they, want it perfect, and yeah, they, no, the, that's why they do yeah. all those things. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you, it changes the character of the band. Hmm. Like no, once I, you, hold, when, you know what I mean, right? You got a good character, you want to hold on to. It. These days, now it's all about the you know holding on to that. Hmm. You know, we have our next. We are. We have our next album. It's completely written already. We just finished writing it. Yeah, like what the one after this? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. It's all, we're, all we got to do is just go on the road now, do all this shit, rock, and then we'll go right back in the studio and just record the, the next record. It's all Excellent. fucking done. Excellent. Yeah, we used all this we, we, all this pandemic downtime to do that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, good. I'm glad you made use of the time. And I, I guess it helps that you all live close together because some bands didn't have the luxury during the pandemic. Yeah, true enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Looks like, uh, myself, we live uh, about 15 minutes away from each other. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. That really helps. Of, and, uh, and our bass player, you know, he's you know he's a half hour from here. So, we, and we have our we have our own per private studio. We jam four days a week there. Um, oh wow! Uh, right. Monday to Thursdays. Yeah, we've been doing that forever. It's our storage place too, but you know we we can actually rehearse there, right? Yeah, yeah. I so similar to what we've got. Um, I yeah, I live about thirty minutes away from the studio, and then my brothers and my dad. All, we're all kind of within thirty minutes of each other. Yeah, so it's yeah, just that's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You get together and it, it makes a difference, doesn't yeah. it? Right. I wish we did it four four times a week, but we don't. We should. Yeah, we should. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, well, well, we push it, uh, you know. But we have the time, and you know, that's what we, I'm in game shape myself as a drummer. I play all the time. I, you know, I got my pad here. You know, I'm always playing, but I play real drums four days a week for at least an hour and a half. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I really wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's what keeps you in game shape. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Yeah, I, I've never, I've never lost like the stamina of being able to play live. But yeah, I, I, I've said on this podcast many times, I don't spend enough time actually practicing. And I, yeah. it's just one thing I need to address. And I, I am improving. I did, I played a little bit on the weekend, which was nice. And yeah, well, anyway, anyway, let's yeah. get back onto you. It's not talking okay. about so, uh, <laughs> so for right, you, hopefully people will check out the new album, Impact is Imminent. But what out of the previous albums would you say if people wanted to dip in and out or check out some of the best albums, which ones would you recommend? Well, well you know, all the Anvil records, in my opinion, have great songs on them. Yeah. Like all of them. It doesn't even matter. Even the Dark Year period, there's good tracks there. But for me, definitely the last four through since Hope and Hell, I guess, till now. Okay. Those are all those are all really, really strong records, in my humble opinion. Good. Well, your opinion yeah. is good. It's a good opinion yeah. to have. And, uh, you know, if you want to get the classic, uh, you know, the legendary records, well, everybody, they just go get those, you know. They're all good albums, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Fortune Fire is a classic, you know, a record. I don't, you know, when we made that record in the day, it's the same thing. You know, to us, it was just like, man, we're making some cool, fast music. Yeah. That was, it was, had not, no significance of nothing about it to us <laughs> like it's just hey man that's pretty good energy well you guys have a lot of energy you know people say that you guys have a lot of energy and it turns into oh man it's speed metal it's thrash metal it's fucking you know all these terms come out of everything like, what the hell there. yeah well a lot, a lot of people cite you as their like one of their influences you know and it must be a nice feeling when someone like Lars Ulrich from Metallica 
says, you know, you're one of the influential drummers. Have you ever met Lars or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Lars, sure. Is he? Yeah, uh, I, I know Lars. Uh, um, I, know, I know a lot of people. I don't, I don't usually like to talk about it like that. I can, though. No. Well, I, I've met, yeah, of course, I've met a lot of people. There's a lot of people I haven't met. <laughs> yeah. Not too, but, yeah. But yeah, I know. I've known Lars for a long time. Cool. And yeah, he, yeah. He must, I'm sure he respects you and um, where other people like, I'm sure like someone like Charlie Benante from Anthrax. Yeah, probably yeah, Charlie, yeah. He's been yeah, on the show. Guys, yeah, these guys, yeah, these guys, uh, I'm sure they, uh, I know Charlie too. Yeah, I know, I know them all. Yeah, you know, I, you know, you've been around. Well, yeah, that generation, I, a lot of these guys, they've, I even knew Taylor Hawkins. You know what I mean? Did you? Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, like, uh, that whole tragedy was just, yeah. uh, he's literally one of, like, one of my favorite drummers of all time, man. Like yeah, that style yeah. and his his music, especially as as. as and yeah, you know, yeah. Go on. Oh, yeah, sorry. I just meant like I just grew up listening to his music since I was a kid, and like so he's been one of my favorite drummers, and since I was a kid, and I I'm still devastated, and I I cried a couple of times when I found yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, just being a fan. Know, yeah. It's, yeah. From the outside looking at just that whole what that could happen to many any, many anybody's, but uh, hmm. it's it's a very selfish waste. It's a sh yeah, you know, it's a horrible. It's, it's super. It's it's selfish, man. You know, you're you're fucking doing all this bad shit to yourself. You got kids. You got family, right? Yeah, and you got your responsibility. Your fucking band. You know, like you, you know, you're worth a lot of money. Well, you know, why are you so unhappy, man? What really? You know, it makes you wonder. Going, like, what the fuck's wrong with you, right? Yeah, well, it's it's hard. It's hard for it's hard for me to have an opinion on that because yeah, well, uh, that's you know, the only way I can think of it. Going, yeah. like, what the what the fuck, man? Like you, you know, is, is, it, like, is it a, like a mental health thing that's deep, you know, caused a lot of this? And and yeah, you know, yeah. I, I've got a lot of friends who are suffering at the moment with depression and and all yeah. these things. And I I find I'm trying to understand it because I don't suffer myself. I'm very fortunate not to suffer with these things. And yeah, you are. That might have a part in it. Who knows? It's not, you know, Who knows? I, I have no idea. I didn't know his personal life, but just from the outside, you know, when they say, you know, you're, you know, you're, you know, you're yeah. just full of fucking hard shit in your body. And it's like, well, what the hell, you know, what are you doing that for? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you, either way, it's, it's just, yeah. it's, a hard, it's a sad loss. And, you know, you yeah. Just... And you know, it's really ironic. I guess uh, we have, what, I could tell you something that's coming. We have a lyric video. I'll just, I won't tell all of it. We have a lyric video coming up April 21. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, there's, another, there's another song going to be coming out off this record before the record comes out, right? Yeah, yeah, good. And that song, there's an intro to it that is kind of now ironically very tied into what just kind of happened. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, uh, that's all I'll say now because I don't want to give away. But, no. it had, but it had nothing to do with any of it. That's, it's kind of like fucking weirdest thing. That we, you know, we write this song years ago. I could, the song's called Take a Lesson. I could talk about that. Yeah. The song's called Take a Lesson, and and then this this intro that I'm talking about is spoken using lesson a lot, and then this this tragedy happens to that man. And yeah. it's all connected, it's all connected, and, and this lyric video will actually show you that oh, wow. right at, right out the gate. But it was not we didn't plan any of it. It was not planned. None, mm -hmm. none of it was planned, no. including the obviously the guy dying. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> Wow. But now it's all happened. So and this thing's coming out really soon. And we start thinking, oh man, I wonder what, the fuck, I wonder what people are going to think of that. Well, yeah. You just got to make make a point to saying that you wrote it years ago. And obviously, yeah, yeah well, no, no, they won't even know that. I mean, they might think it's kind of like cool. I don't even know what's going to happen, man. But we'll, yeah, anyways, we'll find out in a few weeks. Well, stuff like that happens all the time. And unfortunately, people lose their yeah. lives for, for similar reasons. And yeah, 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 the long way. It was tragic. It's such a. I, th I don't know. I think that for the band, it must be tough. I don't know if they, I don't know if they're even going to want to carry on. No. Well, I know they've canceled everything upcoming, which is obviously understandable, but. Um, yeah. 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 It's, it's a, like, it's a huge, it's a huge tragedy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But like as a fan of the band myself, like I, yeah, I, really I, I, I think it would be, it'd be so strange having someone else behind the kit, but. It, I kind of would like to see them continue somehow in the future, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, they'll, yeah, I guess they'll figure out what the right thing is to do. It'll take a lot of time. Yeah. Pour, and, and pour. I mean, you know, they, or just make another band. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's, just, just make another band. Okay, you know. Different band. Okay, say the Foo Fighter thing, you know, we have to say that, you know, that era's got to be shut down. So we just yeah. start something else. Good idea. Same guy, 
you know, idea. the same guys, you know, we, we, you know, we'll still kind of be the same sounding band. We'll just call it something else. I mean. Yeah. They, they've got, yeah, they've got that kind of power within the industry and exposure to be able to just do that and still have a, a big fan base waiting to lap yeah, well, it up. Aren't, I, I just learned that uh, somebody just told me or whatever heard last night that, uh, that they won the most, uh, all rock American bands, they've won the most Grammy Awards. Ever. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that makes sense. I think they won three on the weekend or whatever. The more, yeah, yeah, whatever. I think 15. They've won some like 15 of them or something since they've been a band. So that's sort of like some kind of record, you know, wow. of a rock band. Yeah. Pop, oh, pop rock. Oh yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, you know that's kind of. I know it might not be your kind of thing, but it, you know, it's it's a big influence on. No, there's, no, there's some there's some cool songs. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's some they have cool tunes. Yeah. I know, I know Dave Grohl too, man. Like I know all these guys. You know more. Wow, amazing. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, they, all respect, they all respect you and look up to you, man, because you're a legend yourself. So that's cool. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's. What it is. I don't even know what it is half the time. I don't even know, man. I'm just a fucking guy who likes to smoke dope and play drums. Play drums <laughs> and. Paint. And paint, and paint, paint. Yeah, I love yeah. Painting. <laughs> amazing. Oh, so yeah, you've also got some touring coming up. I know you've got a USA tour June and July. So if if anybody, yeah, 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 we do, and, and we got a nice. Uh, yes, you're right, and we also have a nice uh, in October. We got a nice UK run. Ah, I'll have to come along. Yeah, yeah, we got I, like I might seventeen think... or eighteen shows. No, I think you guys might be playing at, the, at that time. I think we're in Germany, but it depends. Yeah. You, there might be a little bit of a gap. We'll see. I'm in Germany because... in October. I know that. Yeah, so are we. We're there for three months. We're starting October and we ended around Christmas in Europe. Oh, we're wow. going to play. We're, yeah, we're going to play. It's a uh, proper tour. Yeah, 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 proper <laughs> tour. Yeah, a real tour. A real one, one that lasts for months. Yeah, but you know, it's well because it's our it's it's our, it's our job, right? Yeah, yeah. And you haven't done it, been able to do it for so long, so you've got to mm -hmm. you've got to take advantage of it. So, what do you know is the difference between touring like the U.S. and Canada and Europe? Are there any obvious differences? Oh, with, how, yeah. with how it all works because a lot of people say this us and you're talking about us and canada like yeah I, compared to europe oh it's fucking can't compare what? it <laughs> what? In, okay you can't in my okay in my opinion you can't compare the two even at all okay you know, if why I, is that europe is happening north america sucks <laughs> okay okay how's that for just a cut and dry difference you know what i mean mm. and yeah, just the way they treat you at venues. Yeah. Uh, the fans, the people, the people who actually support the music that we play, right? Mm. Yeah, people dig it all, all here in North America, but they certainly don't got the love and culture like the Europeans do. Yeah, I know. I do. I notice the difference from yeah. just, I'm not, no, I'm not digging at the UK because the UK is good, but when, we even notice the difference when we go to mainland Europe being slightly better yeah. and a bit more passion but there's lots of passionate uk fans absolutely but there is an obvious difference when we, we go over to places like germany and they literally live for it they live for the rock they live for the metal absolutely and, and, and it's like that if you ever get to um okay well it's not even south america we've never done it i'd love to yeah well it's yeah it's it's a, it's, it's a tough place to go yeah like the tour and stuff but the people there yeah it's all about the music for them right yeah and Japan is much like that. See, uh, for me, the UK, because you're a UK guy, you're from, yeah. are you, are you from the UK or Wales? Or... Yeah, Wales is, yeah, Wales is in the UK, yeah. Yeah. So are you a Wales guy? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, Car uh, near Cardiff, if you ever play near Cardiff, right. let me know. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, that's Budgie Town. I love Budgie. Yeah, that, well, there's yeah. A called, there's a band called Budgie. Yeah. yeah. But uh, when we play in the UK, uh, for us, it's it's pretty electric there. Cool. I guess because we're, we're from Canada, right? I don't know. I mean, who fucking knows why, but it's, it's good there. Like, you know, cool. the UK people really, uh, we feel love there. Excellent. Oh, maybe, maybe you... like, 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 like kind of love that maybe even sometimes better than Germany. In Germany, we feel heavy love there. Like, it's really weird. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it, might be, yeah, it might be because you, I guess, you don't come over so often. So when yeah. you do, and because yeah, it's a big, it's it's a international, big yeah, it's a big it's deal. A big, yeah, it becomes a little big deal at that moment. Yeah, yeah, the replay all but, the time. Yeah, but it, but there was a time we didn't do very well in the UK. Yeah, but like, cool. we, yeah, there was a time uh, where you know before I guess the movie time, right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and fucking you know, nobody gave a shit about us, and you know we didn't do very well at all. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's tough. It's, it's very tough. Um, it, it must it must be so difficult because. 
to budget a tour like that coming from Canada, you you need X amount of money to play with to be to even yeah, yeah. To yeah carry like, across to even yeah, do to anything. Be, yeah, yeah, right. So unless well, you uh, you need to sell yeah. a certain amount of tickets. So if you yeah, how would you grow? It's so hard. You just got to suffer, man. There's a lot of suffering involved. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, it's commitment, man. You know, it's kind of like you're, you know, it's like like a gypsy life. You know, a gypsy. You know, like living yeah. like a gypsy. Yeah, like living like a fucking gypsy. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you and you live for your dream and your brain going. You know, you know, it's a good band. We got good tunes. Uh, you know, and if we just keep at it, at it, somebody eventually will give us a break. Yeah. Like, like that's all you could. That's how we thought. You know, that's how you can think. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely how. Like. I think I can't remember any quotes specifically, but Lips in the movie just lives that. He's like, we, yeah. we will be, we will make it. We will be big. Yeah, 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 yeah. We will, yeah, get, yeah. We, we will get there. Well, yeah, he's right. Well, yeah, he was, yeah, he is right. And he was always right. I always felt that way too, but I always saw obstacles along the way where he just believed, you know, they're mm. invisible. The yeah. obstacles are invisible, right? Mm. You know, listen, this whole business is only about one thing. If you know the right people, the business part of it, right? Yeah. The job gets done. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And yeah. No, it, it just gets done. It doesn't even matter what what you are, the product. If, if you know the right people. Yeah. They can make can it happen. Start, yeah, next thing you know, you're fucking, now we're happening, man. What happened? Oh, I just met this guy and his fucking four people. Holy shit, man! Your whole world's changed. Yeah, I'm a fucking. I'm rich as fuck now. What? What do you? I don't know what happened. Like, <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah, it, you've got to be. That's it's, or it's a funny and it can happen to people who are talented. The same difference. Oh, now yeah. we're now we're putting some real talent people out there. Of course, fucking people are gonna like you, man. You're fucking good. <laughs> yeah, right? that, it reminds me actually. Again, I hate going back to the movie, but when I watched it the other day, so it's no, no, it's not fresh. Talk to it's fresh in my mind. Okay, and okay. There's a quote. There's a, an interview with Lemmy at the start. And, and and he yeah, they, they he ask him it. he says like they were never in the right place at the right time That's in this truth. in this industry you've got to be at the right place at the right time um, that is so true it couldn't be more profoundly true yeah it links with what you just said and you know and that's a lot of people have said this about you know my, maybe my old band they they really love our music oh, i can't believe you never got big or you never got bigger than you were it's like well we we didn't. We were never in the right place at the right time. We never got that break, despite yeah, how yeah. good you think our music was or, or whatever. We, right. we didn't have that break. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of bands out there that deserve to be no known. Yeah, absolutely. Tons, so, like tons, like fucking tons, endless thousands amounts, of right? talented people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't know the right people. They don't get the right break. It's not at the right time. You know, everybody's together at this moment. Oh, now uh, he wants to get married or whatever. You know, like the whole fucking ching ching. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like it's keeping it together too. Like there's a lot involved, right? Yeah. No, there is. There is a lot. And there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of people in a lot of people's lives to be, uh, sustaining a band and, and make, trying to make a band a full time yeah, actual it's thing. Easy. It's very difficult. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yes, yeah. It's but, doable uh, though. But yeah. it's, it's, there's a lot of sacrifice. I mean, I've done it. Like, okay, Anvil, we, we're examples of that. Yeah, you've done it. We're, we're kind of examples of that. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can do it, but, you know, there's a lot of sacrifice for it. Yeah. Well, well yeah, people need to watch the film and be inspired. And if they, maybe if they feel like they're in a similar position and they've been yeah. working hard at the industry. I think, like, I think a lot of people relate to that Anvil movie on that level. It's, it's yeah. like a slice, it's like kind of like a slice of life movie. Yeah. And, and it doesn't even re it doesn't have to relate to the music industry as well. Maybe in in other could parts. Be anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah, totally. Hey, yeah, it, yeah, it could be a plumber, electrician, or whatever. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they earn a lot more money than us generally, but um. <laughs> Apologies for interrupting this episode of Drum for the Song. I really hope you're enjoying it so far. I just wanted to take a few moments to tell you about my Patreon page. This is a place where you can support the podcast in exchange for some bonus content. You can head over to patreon.com forward slash drum for the song. There are three tiers available at the moment. One is £3 a month, one is £5 a month and the other one is £10 a month. Each tier grants you access to exclusive benefits. 
which include bonus episodes, early access to the main episodes, private Facebook group membership, merch discounts, discount on Motorhead Beer as well as a monthly competition to win Motorhead Beer, access to Skype chats with me, asking my guests questions, occasional free gifts like drumsticks, free tickets to Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons shows, and your name in the episode description. If you regularly enjoy the podcast and think you would enjoy those benefits too, please consider signing up. If you didn't already know, I do everything for this podcast all by myself. So I do all the contacting, all the research, all the interviews, all the audio editing, all the video editing, all the artwork, all the uploading. I write all the descriptions. I build the website. Everything is just me. So essentially, the money from the subscriptions helps me keep a bit of time free during my weeks so I can continue making the podcast for you guys. So again, that's patreon.com forward slash drum for the song. Check it out and enjoy the rest of the episode. Drum for the song podcast. Let's talk about your drums because I know you love your drums. Okay. And, um, okay, what, sure. what are you playing at the moment? I believe it's Natal drums. Yes. I'm currently using a Natal kit that they built. They have two of them. Nice. Why am I playing a towel? I used to play D drum. I, I play all. I will play anything. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you know, when it comes down, you know, it's all good. They're all good drums. Yeah. If, if, any drummer knows that. If you if you know anything about drums. Yeah. They are. They're sure they got their own look, character, hardware, all the stuff that comes with it. The drums are drums to a guy like me. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. You know, they're just drums, man. You know, no problem. I'll make them sound good, and don't worry about it. I'll, and I'll play. You want to hear my stuff? What I do? I'll play them on it. You mean? Yeah. So um, I was with D Drum and my good friend who ran the company and stuff, you know, he died. Uh, he, he just died. And the whole company died with him. Oh, that's <laughs> sad, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty sad. The company's still there, but the internal part, uh, and I just, guys like all us uh, veteran players or whatever you were called, the guys like us, drum hero guys, whatever they call us guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they started going, oh, you know, well, we want to get some of these new guys here and, you know, whatever. So they, they just, the, the corporate part changed there, right? Okay. So I just said, fuck it, man. You know, I'll just, I'll just poke around and I'll just poke around. Yeah. I, the whole thing is I need drums around. I need drums in Europe. I need drums in North America. It's really, then I yeah. don't got to rent them. You don't got to rent them. Of course, yeah. It, it's, your, it's your drum kit. To expect what you want. You know, yeah. Your sizes, what color, whatever. You want the support, yeah. Yeah, you got it. It's very important when you're, you know, you know that when you're whipping around, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can rent them, but it's a cost that's fucking don't need it. If you, yeah, you don't, you don't need the cost, man. If you can pick up drums somewhere, right? exactly. So we were in the UK just recently, I don't know, three years, not long, a few years back now, doing a, a, a um, uh, we were doing some shows, but we didn't have our backline with us. We was one of those, you know, you go, in, they gave you, they gave you some gear. And uh, one of the gigs there in, near Marshall, Crawford, wherever it is, the Crawford Arms. Crawford Arms in Milton Keynes. Yeah, I know it well. Yeah, Milton, Milton Keynes. Yeah, yeah, you know it well. I've you know it well. well. Right on. So we were playing, we played there, right? Played there a few times, but we played there and they gave us a Nutel drum kit. Whatever, it's just Nutel drum kit. So I, I, never, I said, okay, these look pretty cool. I never played them, didn't know anything about them. So we set them up and I played them. We played the whole show. And I walked away going, you know, that was a fucking good sounding drum kit. Just in my mind, I was going, you know, that actually sounded fucking good. There, there's not a lot of that kit. Yeah. And then uh, the people, I don't know, the guy, somebody took us to milk the Marshall factory like the next day. I don't know, I don't know how we got there, but. It's, neat. it's, it's quite somewhere. close to the venue. It's in the same city, yeah. That's yeah. The venue, right? Somebody, somebody, somehow was like, okay, we're getting up in the morning, guys. We're going to go to the Marshall plant. We'll have a tour and check this place out. And we went there. And it was a fucking great experience. Saw lots of cool shit. Met a lot of great people. And then I got to the drum thing and there was all the drums there. And then and I, I said to the guy going, man, I played in, uh, those Intel drums there last night and the uh, fuck, they sounded really damn good. You know, I'd, uh, I'd fucking give them a go, you know, if, if you guys want to give me some drums, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the guy goes, okay. Okay. That was it. That, that. Like, that, was, that was it. He goes, okay. <laughs> like, it was like, that was it. He goes, okay, sure. Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Right. And, and and that was the end of it. And then that turned into drum, Nutel drums. Nice. And I'm very happy with them. They sound, we recorded a new album. 
with the tell drums on the impact album. What shell material have you got? The maple. Maple, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're maple. They're they're they're, they're, they're they have their own tone, you know. Like these uh, drums today, the way I don't know the way they compress these plies and yeah. today's drum technology is not like it was in the old days. Oh yeah, it's it's there's some new there's some new way about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I was, exactly. in, China, I was in China. They show. I went to a drum factory there and I watched how they did it. It was it's quite incredible. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I use pasty cymbals just like I think you do yourself. I do indeed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the best there's, one. There's, yeah, there's not much to say about those except that you know that that's the real shit. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, sure they break fast. So what? Well, I've only broken a few. Yeah. I, I've, uh, I've started using thicker ones. I, I broke a few crash cymbals, but they were just the regular 2002 crashes. So I've gone for um, what do they call them now? Full, not full crash. I don't know whichever one the thickest ones of that range, and I haven't my, I haven't broken those yet, so that's good. Okay. So I think, yeah, you got to you yeah. have to hit well, them hard for them for them to open. Though that's the only problem. Yeah, they they crack. You know, just well, they all all symbols crack. All symbols so. do. Yeah, yeah. But they're great sounding. I love pasty. I've used them most of my uh, drumming life. Great. I have I have used Zildjian and Saving. You know, I've dabbled with uh, the other guys right too. But uh, pasty is still superior for me. Cool. That's interesting to know if you've tried them all and. And, and yeah, I think they, they all have their own. I, I like the sound of it. They have their metal. I don't know. They make a sound that the other ones don't. They all yeah. have their own sound. Yeah, I quite guess that's what it is. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just old school. I'm yeah. fucking, I'm old school, man. I don't know. Nice. Yeah. And then are you using Vic Firth sticks? And Vic Firth sticks. I still use them. Yeah. I have, uh, yeah, these guys, they're all like artists. I've had this stuff for years. They've been, they're good sticks. Yeah. Uh, there's not much really to say about them, you know. I mean, I probably Pro Mark are good sticks too. Fucking, you know, I don't know. They're all good sticks. Yeah. You know, like, like well, there's a stick company in Sweden that's very popular. You, you, you probably know the name. Vin Vincent, I use those. Yeah. 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 Those guys, yeah. Those guys wanted to give me sticks. You know, I, who knows? Maybe one day I might end up using them. Who knows? Well, I don't know. From my experience with those, I, I, I stuck with them. I just never break them. I don't know if you break many sticks. No, no, no. You don't anyway. Don't. That's, no. Maybe that's not a problem for you. Um, but I, I tried, I did an experiment once with this. I used the same pair and I tried to see how many shows I could do with the same pair. And I got, yeah, a, yeah. I got a 16 shows, headline shows, including sound checks with the same pair. Before, they, they didn't even break, but they got to the stage. They, 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 they were chewed too away. chewed up. Yeah. yeah. And I, I gave them away to some little kid. But, um, yeah. but that, that's that was, true. that was an amazing, example that's of a, how strong they are yeah that is a good example 16 shows eh? playing live yeah, yeah. i'm not that, you know i'm not the hardest hitter but i i don't i do i go for yeah. it i'm not the hardest yeah, yeah. Guy well, if you're walking high hat anybody who plays a high hat and drumming is gonna it's gonna wear sticks down yeah to, no matter yeah. what sooner or later right it's all open high hat and crash yeah, yeah. cymbals and yeah, stuff no, I, yeah i know i know the style of uh, your band yeah okay well yeah we yeah the, you very kindly um told me a little story before we hit the record button about you discovering my band in, in Germany. So you, yeah. you're, wel you're welcome to tell it again, because it makes yeah. me look quite good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like I, like I said, I'll repeat the story to you. Uh, I was, after a sound check in Germany a bunch of years ago, right? We'd go in the back to smoke a joint, which I'm going to light up on now, because I need another one. And, um, you know, we're all chit-chatting there and, and uh, other guys, uh, they're, uh, they're crew guys. I think they're German guys, but they're crew guys, anyways. They're playing uh, some tunes, and up comes this uh, whatever that riff is. That, that this fucking riff, man. I'm going, man. That has really cool sound, man. That's that, that's kind of that's old school, man. That sounds old school to me. The song starts up, and I'm going, fuck, what a cool fucking groove, you know? Like this whole. It had, you know, the production was expected. It sounded like today's, you know, to me yeah, it was like modern, was modern, modern produced, modern produced style stuff. But it was more about songs anyway. So I was, you know, then it gets into the, you know, the, the fucking vocals start going. And I'm going, what the fuck is this band, man? This is fucking really good shit. 
And I listen to the lyrics and I'm going, what's this guy talking about? Fucking some kind of fucking addiction, man. That's is this guy addicted to what? Fucking drugs? Love? What the fuck is he talking about? This is so good. I said, like, oh, this is so fucking good, man. And then I go to then I go to buddy there, uh, Hans or whatever. Hey, buddy, what is this? Who is this guy? I, said, I don't know, man. This is really good. He goes, oh man, it's Phil Campbell and his uh, bastard sons. It's their first album, man. It's fucking it's a really great album. So he says to me, right? And I go, holy fuck, awesome! I went and bought the album myself the next day. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's, that's a cool thing. And, and I, I love the whole. And I, I love the whole album. The, the last song of that uh, uh, Silver Line or what it was the, the punk song. It's very punky. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I, I find you. I find you guys. You got this punk me, rock metal thing mixed together. I guess the singer had brought that. Yeah. Well, the the punk thing certainly was. I think slightly influenced by like the faster Motorhead songs. Is it, is that I what think, it is? yeah, but I, I also listened, I grew up listening to like punk rock and like pop punk. So that yeah, yeah, yeah. may be why I play the faster stuff in that way as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's a bit of a fusion of rock and roll and metal as well, a little bit. For for a young band, okay, you know, I know your, your dad's like yeah. my age, we're probably the same age. <laughs> yeah, I think he's six, 60, 61 this year. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I'm a little older than your dad, just a okay. little. Yeah, but... For young guys, you know, I would look at your band as young. The sound is young. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's and good. Go that we're still, we're still young to some people because I feel old. <laughs> but that's great. Yeah, well, don't. No, you know, you should feel old, man. No, I don't mean. I don't mean. You know, right? I, 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 there's a lot of there's like a new generation now of bands that I feel like I don't know what's going on. You're 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 an old guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, wait till you get to my age, dude, man. Yeah. You'll be going <laughs> like you'll be going. What are you're you the, talking about? <laughs> you're, the le- you're the legend. The legend. Right. So that's cool. Yeah. Maybe I'll be a legend one day. I don't know. I have to work harder on my drums. But, um, oh, yeah. You know, I don't know how that comes about, man. You, you know, you got to pioneer music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which okay, I if, you, if, if I, if somebody, okay, I'm going to ask myself, how do you, how do you, what's, what do you have to be a, to be a pioneer? Ah, uh, well, be a pioneer. Uh, make up. You got to make up shit. Make something up. Yeah. You got to be somebody who, hey, we did this and people, liked it enough so they copied it yeah i think that's what makes things legendary i guess yeah no that's a good that's a very good um explanation really right um, i mean so. outside of that i don't think how what you're just doing what somebody else is doing there right yeah yeah, yeah. hey we're just yeah we sound like these guys they're cool you know like you know after metallica became famous there's millions of bands that sort of sounded like them right yeah yeah let's get that guitar crunch and let's uh you know start singing like a barker or whatever you know you know, do all these things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. But you got to be, I think you got to be a pioneer and then stick with it. And then if it gets influential and it makes a difference, then I, I guess that's how you, yeah, I guess some people get legendary. Oh, you sold lots of records. True. You know, or you're just, or you're bad guys, you know, oh, they're, you got your reputation. You're the bad boys or. Yeah, there's like, lots there's, of there's, ways. Yeah, there's lots of things you can, you know, or, you know, like Kiss, you know, look at these guys at the big show and a fucking, you know, like, there's, there's so many things I guess it, we can make up with legend. What's what? yeah? That's a good point. Very good point. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, talk, talking about legendary, I, I know you've got a legendary uh, vintage oh. snare drum collection. Ooh. That I, you you post yeah, on your Facebook page every couple yeah, of days, and I'm like, oh my god, that's amazing. So what? Um. Yeah. I'm. I got a. I got a problem when it comes to the snare drums. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> is it an addiction? <laughs> Would you say it was an well, addiction? Well, I, I mean, well, I'm only I'm addicted, but not out of control. I mean, there's only so many. They're hard to find. The ones that, you know, if, if I wanted every snare drum in the world, then you know, it would be a problem because yeah. it's just it's never ending, right? Yeah, never ending. No, I'm just I, I like metal shell drums. Uh, I'm old school. Uh, I grew up with the drums I own. Uh, I, I grew up with those drums. Yeah, it's like my time. It's like my was my time, right? Yeah. As, a, as a kid and but they were great drums that's that's what that's why it's ironic today yeah looking looking at these things and i use the i use these drums i don't just fucking collect them i actually fucking play these things right i i i, I, I was gonna I ask i won't i won't i won't use a boutique drum live would you use one live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no the a boutique snare drum i won't use at all Live or in a studio. The ones I own, I would, I, I do use them in a studio and cool. I do use them live. Nice, nice, nice. What, yeah, what are your favorites? Have you got any favorites? 
Yeah, I do. I have a few. Um, well, as of as in the recent years, uh, the Beverly uh, Cosmic Twenty One is is a top favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. I recorded the new. I recorded the last uh, Amble record with that. Ah, cool. So, you, so yeah. if, if if anybody's you know checking out the snare tone, or whatever, so that's a Beverly uh, Cosmic Twenty One. So that uh, so for the, the track, whole album, the whole, for the whole album. album, yeah, whole album, every track. Uh, was that snare drum? Uh, but now these days, I'm really, really fond of uh, my Heyman Chrome over aluminum. It's 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 like an old Ludwig 400. Ah, I mean nice. it's it's very similar. The hardware might be a little heavier duty or whatever, but the sound uh, is in that world. Okay, that's interesting. So, Okay, it's in. It's still not the same. If you put, if you had the two Ludwig four hundred and a Heyman, bang, 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 bang they're gonna sound just differences. Yeah, you, I I recently bought a Ludwig Acrylite. A, yeah. Okay, that's a great stuff. That's a, a, aluminum. I, we say aluminium in the UK. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Say aluminum. Yeah. <laughs> I always find that, that remarkable. That's a four. That's a that's a four hundred four. I believe that that's a, a the model. That's, that's oh, is it okay? Oh, I don't I want to sound like a fucking geek. I, I don't know enough about mod- <laughs> I don't know about enough about model numbers, so I, I'm not yeah. going to say anything. But it sounds yeah. great, and I, I couldn't. I had to buy it. Uh, I I played it, yeah. and I was like, yeah. I had to find an excuse in my head, the reason to buy it. So me and my brother, there's no excuse, man. Ben Harves, because he, he's got the recording studio, so he can use it then when someone comes in with a, a shitty snare drum, and I can use it for, when we record. Yeah, smart, smart, uh, a great snare. Yeah, it was good. But it's yeah, a, it's 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 a it's a it's a workhorse. It's, it gives you a good, nice fucking tone. Hmm. Yeah, Acrolytes are le- also pretty legendary. It's a great snare to have. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're a collector, you gotta have one. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that was it. I'm not. I don't like to say I'm a collector. I've got. I probably own about ten snare drums, maybe, and I think that's more okay. more than I more than enough. I take two on tour with me. Yeah, I have one and spare, yeah. one main, and then I like yeah. to have a few options in the studio and a few in yeah. my in my garage if I've been playing a local show, you know, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. I, I, just, I, relate, I, I relate to it, man, big time. But I, I, I'd love to, you know, I'd love, number one, I'd love to be able to afford more, but it's the storage is the big thing and, and justifying it. Well, yeah. maybe one day well, there'll be an option for me, but I don't know. Cause listen, I'm into it. I'm interested yeah, yeah, in the vintage stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it, but it's good stuff. It's not just that, you, that, you know, for bragging rights hey man no. i own it you know what i mean that, that's part of it but once you get past that then it's like fucking play the thing man like yeah it, it, it fucking sounds good and it has these sounds like it's a boot the boot, i call them boutique the boutique drums of today yeah uh I, they don't got that sound no more man it's no. missing well it's i think it, take, this... it takes a while for would you say the aging process has something to do with it or is it just the manufacturing. Well, the car, I, I think the wood, man. I think you know with these that uh, bedingo fucking hardwoods and it, all these bloody snare drums. You know, a lot of there's a lot of wood out there now. Yeah, a lot of wood. Yeah. As, po- as opposed to metal, right? Yeah, yeah. So all this wood has got it now. Uh, has, has got another sound, obviously. Yeah. And it's very punky and packy and tight and tat tat. You know, it's this other kind of tone. I don't. It's not my bag, you know. I mean, I, I listen to it, but I'm, I'm used to. It, but I wouldn't want. To, I don't want my sound. I wouldn't want my sound like that. Fair enough. You want a metal, yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, I want to go down, going, man. I always played these fucking puppies, and I always had that kind of sound, you know, just like the old school guys did. I, I'm happy with that. Yeah, no, that's good to know. Good to know. Yeah, but um, yeah. for anyone who's interested, I think if they follow you on Facebook, you're always posting your your snare wall. <laughs> Yeah, once in a while. Yeah, yeah, we put them up. What's you know, I'm yeah, I'm proud of it. I, I, yeah. There's drummers. I have, I have some drummer guys that uh, really are followers, or they're very, they're more, be more passionate about it than I am. Of course, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure they are. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, but there's some people that just live and breathe this stuff. So, and there, and there's some guys. It's hard to find the stuff. You know, like if you want to go collect right now, or even if you got lots of money, which mm. is fine. You got lots of money, you know. So money's not the issue anymore, right? Yeah. Go find this stuff, man. It's not easy to get it. No, exactly. that's the pro. That's the fucking problem, man. And get it in good that. condition as well, and use yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, and stuff. All my shits in player grade, everyone, yeah. which is pretty damn good condition. You know, museum yeah. quality. I don't have anything museum. No, I don't want it. No, you want player play grade? Yeah, yeah. Player grade's good for me, man. Right? Yeah, yeah. 
and uh, but I won't, uh, you know, even if you said, here's something, give me a hundred, a hundred dollars for, and it's totally pitted and destroyed, you know, I wouldn't take it. Fair enough. You want it a little bit, you want it better than that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. nice. Yeah. No, good. I, I, I'm interested in that and um, look forward yes, to hearing yes, the yes. new album. Yeah. Um, if you're an Anvil fan, you'll dig it. That's, yeah. I mean, it's, there's not much really to say. There's a lot of cool stuff. It's not all the same. It's different shit. I don't yeah. Know. So for, for the drummers that listen to this podcast, not everyone is a drummer, but I know there's yeah. a lot of drummer listeners. You know, you've been around, you've, 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 you've done a lot of things. You've accomplished a lot of things with the band. Uh, you're a great player. Have you got any advice for drummers, whether that's about the industry or, or technique or anything that they can, they just from experience that you can give? Well, it would take us another four hours to <laughs> answer that. <laughs> uh, in a nutshell, you know, I guess, you know, if you're going to play your instrument, take it seriously enough to try to learn it well. Mm -hmm. It's it's really worth the while to yourself. Then it's sad. You feel quite satisfied. You, know, you sit there and you're playing, you know, rudiments and you're playing them really fucking smart and chop. And they, you know, it just sounds good. It makes you feel as opposed to playing your usual singles and you know just like shit that's fucking not not real drumming i mean yeah yeah so take your instruments seriously uh would be and if you're going to get in a band and, and and do the number one rule i i believe in always is have fun learn how to have fun i come from the church of f-u-n <laughs> yeah it has to be fun. You have to enjoy everything. You know, take you know, pleasing. If you take it too seriously, if you know, you're not gonna have a good time with it, man. And you're just gonna, you're gonna get discouraged. Yeah, I think that's that's more important than anything. Um, yeah, you're right. Point, taking things too seriously. <laughs> no, if you go too far with it, it will. It, I believe it's self-destructive. Hmm. You know, you, it ha have fun with 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 music. You know, it's a tough business. It is like if, if, you know, if you're into the business, you know, we're going to be business about this. It's tough because it's all run by fucking pieces of shit and mm -hmm. assholes and fucking criminals and fuck nuts and fucking two faced liars. You know, it's, you know, it's just a BS surroundings. Yeah. Even, even a lot of musicians can be much the same way. You know what I mean? I'm sure they can. Yeah. 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 So it's just tough, man. You know, like to be around and you got to just learn how to navigate it, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and and like you said earlier, you know, like Lenny said, you got to be at the right place at the right time. Yeah, you, you got to be lucky. Uh, I'm 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 an older guy now, so it's my my time is different in the business than it would be for somebody who's twenty years old. You know what I mean, mm. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure of it. Starting out, you know, you're twenty years old, man. So you know, you're like a prostitute to these guys. You know, I'm 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 not. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. I know you can recognize you can recognize the bullshit. Yeah, you got it, man. Exactly. You know, I'm yeah. I'm 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 experienced as fuck, and you, you can't fucking feed me much much of anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> I I'll be able to tell you probably more. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No. So just have a good time with it. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. You know, and just stay positive. That's what I can say to guys. You know, but if you're gonna play drums and be serious about it, just learn learn it properly. You know, cool. at least at least make an effort. Yeah, make yeah, make an effort, you know. Just at least make the effort, but have fun. You know, I meet lots of guys that uh, support our band um, when we play shows. You know, the younger bands and stuff, right? Yeah. And they're so they're so it's it's nice to watch because they're so inexperienced at everything. It's yeah. like you know, wow, man, it's a gig, and we just, I just came from a day job, and and I'm gonna do this, and this is gonna be great. My girlfriend and it's gonna be here, and I gotta impress her. And, it's yeah. just like a whole other it's, it's not even a world that the business is about yeah but it's good yeah. that it gives the opportunity to people yeah, in a, that position is great yeah it's, it's cute man to watch from my perspective i mean yeah good i find it cute well one thing i'd like to ask because i'm sure i think it's specifically unique about your playing is that you you okay. use a traditional grip while you're playing in anvil yes. it's like so heavy metal or whatever yes. genre yeah. you want to call it i think that's sure. quite a unique thing to do is that is that because you think it's better for that style or you find it easier or what well you know why why do you do that because that's how i played the drums right i i used to play traditional for years uh and then i 
developed, so you know what, I'll go to match grip. Yeah. And I played match for decades. And then it's just that you got bored. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got bored. I just got bored. I started going, you know what? I played much more with more cooler finesse and stuff when I was playing the old traditional way, right? Like I started just, and I got really developed. I got, you know, I felt I developed uh, match grip quite well, right? Yeah. But I just got bored, I guess is the, the most honest, simplest answers. I got bored. So I just went back to um, traditional. That's interesting. And um, it was a very natural process for me because I was already, I already played traditional anyway. So, yeah. That's how you learned. Yeah, I guess I think if you yeah, learned, I, if your teacher taught you how to play traditional, it, it takes yeah. you know, a lot of play, I play, yes, you're right. But I, I play, I play open hand. I have a, it's called open hand traditional. Okay. So that, that, I don't know, what, how do you describe fuck, that? What is the fuck does that mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> It's see, like I'm being drum geeks here, man. It's fucking great. Yeah. Well, yeah. People uh, want to know, and I, 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 I got, I got a stick here, right? Great. I yeah. Know you, I, I don't know if you can see, right? I don't know. Can I, I can see it. Straight? Yeah. So yeah, people, yeah. people who are watching on YouTube can see it. Right. Open hand is is basically like that. Like so, yeah. your fingers are not actually wrapping it. You're just kind of like this. Okay. And the real control is with the thumb pushing against uh, your finger. Right. It's very interesting, uh, and the stick sits on. But you do go back and forth. So, but you do go back and forth depending on on your licks or or whatever the hell. I think that's what they call open hand because I I do it. I I learned like that, like, and uh, I just play natural that way. And drummers that know this shit come up to me. Why well, I know this because I've had experts tell me. Yeah. You know, come up to me and tell me. Fuck man, that's the fucking most amazing open hand style, man. I've ever seen anybody play. That's fucking unbelievable. They go on and on, right? And I go, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but I go, what are you talking about, right? I'm just playing traditional. No, no, it's traditional open hand, man. It's like blah blah blah. And then, he, then I started learning. Oh, so I guess I do do that. Cool, nice. Right? I, so I, I kind of made. I didn't realize it through. I go, okay, so I, I don't know. It's. I just, uh, you know, where my I learned from Buddy Rich and stuff. So I'm, I'm old yeah. school, right? Yeah, I, 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 I love all that old shit, man. Yeah, well, it, so many drummers do, and that's what I think of when I think of like tr- someone playing traditional grip is is that Buddy Rich kind of style yeah. and lots of jazz you know, guys. If, like if, if you're into snare solos, like you know, it doesn't have to be just like you know, like s- snare dancing and rhythmical stuff, right? Just listen to this all over YouTube. It's the, some, you know, just, yeah. It's like going. It's like having drum lessons, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you find you find you went back to it because you got bored? But do you find yeah, you have so, more control? Yeah, yeah. I just started. Yeah. What happened was, uh, so I went back and I was playing this. Like I'm now going playing all those hard rock metal songs again, right? but doing it like kind of this way. And I just had more, yeah, more fun with it. It just became hmm. like, man, I'm doing doubles and I can do diddles and I'm doing these little kind of fucking lick, roughs now and I'm. I just started, it changed the drumming style a little bit. Cool. I was able to play more. I was already kind of playing jazzy feel, but now I was playing with more jazzy chops. Nice, nice. That's good. It's good to infuse the, the two styles. But and it's so subtle, but it's subtle. So it's, it's not like, you know, it's not like, you know, man, you got a jazz drummer playing jazz stuff no. to like a metal, a metal riff, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but it's subtle. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's yeah. like hey, a, drum, cool. a drummer would notice the difference. Yeah, if you're listening specifically for little things, you Hmm. you go, wow, that was neat, man, right? Yeah, right. So that's the only difference. I have the power. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Can you still get the power with the left? Yeah, I do. Cool. My left hand snap is as powerful as as a... Nice. And I I play my snare um, slightly uh, tilted away from me. Okay. So I got a great, great rim action, man. It's old school. I play like, you know, the snare's... Not as extreme as uh, Buddy Rich or any of it, but it's it's a bit it's a bit away from me. Okay, cool. I think it's very old. Tips. It's very it's very it's very old school. Um, old school. Yeah, I have my uh, uh, flat. Yeah, yeah. I used to play flat with traditional for like quite a few years, mm. and I started noticing that, you know, if I just tip it kind of more up, I'll get that crack. Cool. And, and, it, and, it's, and I did that, and it's just like perfect. Yeah, well, that's the great thing about drums. There's no right or wrong ways of doing things, and yeah, I think that's yeah. why I, that's why I think it's great. Um, 
And like what you said about when we were talking about drum brands, there's not like specific brands that do specific styles or for specific genres. Any yeah. you can make any drum kit suitable for any any genre. Absolutely, by the way you tune in and play it, it's great. Yeah, I believe I agree with you one hundred percent. Yeah, that's what's, that's what's cool about drumming. I think that's why I, I took to it. Um, uh, nice not having rules. And, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, and, and plus everybody has their own touch. Yes, absolutely. Right? Like you have your touch. I yeah. have my touch. Everybody has their own little touch to how they play, right? Yeah. And that becomes your own signature style and sound and, and finesse and everything is attached to that touch. Yeah. And that's right. Yeah, gives you more. We're all, we're, we're all individuals. We're all individuals. You know, the only guys want to play like Buddy Rich, but nobody can. Because because he is the only Buddy Rich. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, and the same with it goes down the line. But it's, you, you want to really, man, I want to play like that, my hero. Yeah, you, and you, you damn do. Those guys play great, right? But you're still never going to be like your hero. No. Because he had that touch, which which was his. his, his he, owned, he, he owned it. You know? Yeah. And I know another example is, especially in the rock world, is obviously John Bonham is, is one of yeah. the people, yeah, people look up to and want to be like, but no one quite sounded no, or don't. feel the no. same as him. No. You can try. You could try, no, but you know, but he his soul burned a certain way, and he did a, you know, like, you know, he drank his booze, you know, he had all these things that worked for him that all came together when he pounded the drums. Mm. That's the feeling, you know. They didn't play the click tracks, you know. But back we can go back to the click tracks thing again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no click tracks involved in that stuff. That was just like the real thing, a real band. Let's play and let's record it. Yeah, John. And John we, was the click track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you and it's going to be good, but you know it fluctuates. Mm. You know, what I mean, if you, anybody, I think it's already been done. If you go, to, you know, they've metered these. You know, people oh, yeah. have got people have geeked out on those things, but it's it's irrelevant. It's fucking great. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. That's the way. Yeah. Right. Um, before we get towards the end, then I've got okay. I got a Patreon page. So one of the perks of that is that. Um, my patrons can ask you a few questions. So I've written a few sure. down, if you don't mind. Um, the first one, we've kind All of right. covered this, but just in case there's anything else you can think of, this is from Gareth Richards. Do you have any yeah. memories of opening Monsters of Rock in Donington, 1982? I know you'd be talking about this earlier on. Oh, wow, what a question. I think maybe he was there. Maybe that's why he's asking. <laughs> um, any specific memories of that day, whether it was the performance or not? Anything uh, else? Well, I guess the uh, during uh, I told you about uh, prior to the performance, but the performance part, what I can remember is we're playing uh, one of the tunes, of whatever it was, six six six, is uh, one of the one of the metal songs, and just all the bottles flying at us, man. <laughs> just just the shit was flying up like crazy, man. I, I'll never forget that. Just, you know, the bouncing off the cymbals and. Uh, like uh, you know, they like, but fucking urine is fucking everywhere, man. Ah. You can smell the shit, fucking you know, like it, it's unbelievable, right? And uh, you know, fucking and lips is trying to sing, and it, it was just like we're getting pelted uh, with stuff. You can't, I guess you never forget that. No, you and never then, forget that. But, and then later on, and then later on, we were talking with Mick Box of Uriah Heap. Nice. And, and uh, he comes up to us and goes, "Fuck, man, you guys went over really well, right?" Like that, I think that's what he actually said, right? Nice. And then we said, and we looked at him like, really? Like we were, we, we didn't understand what's happening. Go, really? Like, man, we were fucking throwing shit at us, man, the whole set, right? And he goes, oh yeah, mate, man, like you, that that was a lot of love coming up there, man. You guys, <laughs> you know, that was that was serious love, man. That was not just fucking. And we're going, wow, okay. And then we heard that a few times during the day from other. Uh, the guy in Hawkwind, different artists, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the similar. And then, and then we learned. Uh, then, as and then with Legend and Time, we learned that. Oh, okay, well, you know, that's that's a UK thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's good. Just, so that's, um, that's the only. That's my only real. And we met Lord Harvey. Uh, I guess I could, that's kind of the, the performance. We met Lord Harvey there. Ah, oh, cool. He's uh, some. He's a rebel lord. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> before, again, before my time. And this is another one. Uh, this, let's talk about your painting. What inspires oh. you when you paint, especially for the album covers? Well, I've only made a couple album covers, so it's right. so I guess they're tired. Yeah, 
the last, well, the most uh, coolest one that we kind of like was Anvil is Anvil. We, right. have an, we have an album called Anvil is Anvil, and it's just an anvil in a mirror. And cool. the mirror is reflecting the anvil. <laughs> yeah. anvil, is, anvil is Anvil. So it, it's a very simple thing, but Lips and myself, I, I drew the thing initially, just, I don't even know why I drew it. I just drew it. Half the time, I don't know why I draw, you know, you just, you know, you just fucking around. But then we started talking about it, and he went, fell in love with the idea. He just he, he went crazy for it. He goes, man, uh -huh. that's genius. He goes, that, that, he, that was his opinion, right? He goes, that's that's a genius idea. It's it's so basic in concept, but it, the message is genius. What better way to just pick an anvil is anvil by a reflection of itself. Yeah, it's a good idea. So, yeah. so he just thought it was great, and then he talked me into painting it. I didn't want to paint it just because I don't want to paint our covers. Even though I could, I guess, if I really want to, I could, I could, I just don't. But he just said, you got to do this one, man. You know, cool. you, you know, I don't, you got to do it. That was it. So he talked me into it and I did mm -hmm. it. And uh, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it ended up being is what it is. I don't know. Nice. That's, that's my story on that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but, cool. uh, but uh, I don't really paint anvil covers. So they, they, no. the question was like, it made it sound like I painted a lot of them, but, and I painted a monument of metal. Oh, cool. There's one, uh, it was like, what would that be called? It's like a best of record, I guess. Yeah, a compilation. We have yeah, two, we have, yeah, we have two, you know, out of our whole career, I think it's two of them, official, okay. right? Official ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the second one is uh, called Monument of Metal. And the cover is uh, is my painting, but what they did is they bastardized it. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, like, you know, which is fine. Yeah. It was all for the project. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they they wanted the image, which is perfect, but the image wasn't metal. You know, it was is a is a nice sunny day, and they wanted a nice gloomy Holocaust day, right? I understand. So they well, they digitally altered it after. Yeah, the, yeah, yes, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. You got the original pictures there, but it's things that are yeah. colorized, altered to give it. And that's it. That's all that's ever been done. I've done. Okay, that's that's cool. I I find it interesting that a lot a lot of drummers. Well, a few of the drummers I spoke to on this podcast are also artists as well. It's, Is that right? It seems it's quite common. Yeah. Well, like you said, Charlie Benante. He, 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 yeah, yeah. He does I, it. I, 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 I didn't know he was a painter. Yeah, he's really good. Um, I think his his partner as well. Um, Francis Ruiz from Buck Cherry. He's been on the show. He's he's amazing. Um, oh, and oh, Frank wow. Frank Fontserre from Fozzy. He's he's a painter as well. And there might be more, but that's not the ones I know about. Well, I, well, I, well, I know, um, I, I know Rick Allen from Def Leppard's a painter. Oh, they, oh right, okay. Uh, know. And I know Tico uh, Torres from Bon Jovi's a painter. Ah, see this? It must be. Yeah. I didn't get the painting uh, gene. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> Michael uh, Michael Calarone from uh, Leonard Skinner, the drummer. Oh, really? Yeah, he's really? a painter too. See, there's so many. He's, see, yeah, I wonder what he's a great paints great landscapes. It must be. There must be some form of DNA strand. <laughs> that has drumming and and but, but you know, you, but you could paint. I could. You just don't. You, you don't. You just don't realize it. That's all. I, I I feel when I was a kid, I tried drawing, and I didn't feel like I was particularly talented at that. Okay, and, I got so it. it's not something I've ever really pursued. Oh, so. but um, I, I, I tell I tell I tell everybody they can paint. Mm. I, I tell every maybe I, really yeah. I'm sure, maybe I could, I could maybe I could. But, um, you know, because you really can, you know, if you sat down and just with stuff and just taught yourself or somebody taught the, the preliminaries to you. Yeah. I guess it's like playing drums. Some, someone needs to teach you some of the basics to be able to be able to do it. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you start, you, you know, you'd be sitting there going, man, I'm creating wild, cool things. Mm. Uh, Artists for everybody. Yeah. Like, when you were a child, I guess I maybe can't remember that anymore. <laughs> You know, when you're when you're a little punk, you know, I mean, then you know, you learn how in school. I don't know. Then they teach you like you know, like finger painting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, do you don't you remember any of that? Yeah, Is a little it, bit. I just don't. I never felt like I was. I was never one of the best in the class, if you know. Oh, what okay, I mean. okay, okay. So I guess I was, and I guess I was interested in music and stuff. So you know, but yeah, maybe I'll give it a go. My wife does yeah. it. My wife's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there. So maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's right. Yeah, it's, but uh, I, I've I've been doing it a long time the movie exposes you know it was a big secret of mine for me i kept it a secret ah right until the movie yeah i was the sasha the guy who made the movie he talked me into that ah, to exposing okay. it it took him like a few months i didn't want to uh, initially i just said nah, you know that's you know 
I'm more good with the band thing. You know, who get you know, it's, I'm, uh, I paint for myself. He goes, no, you know, he says, no, you got to show the world, man. You're fucking insane. You're nuts. You got, I got, you, you know, you broke me down. And so I exposed it to the world. And, you know, I, it was a good thing. I see now looking back, it made a lot of fans uh, for uh, that, that dig, they dig the stuff and on that. Uh, I don't sell my, I don't sell my canvases. You don't sell them. Okay. I don't. Uh, I've been, yeah, I could, I've been offered people that have asked me over the years, you know, this, that, and the other, but I just don't feel the need to sell them, but I sell like, I have an art book. I have uh, prints. Of the oh, original. cool. Yeah. I sell those things. Oh, there you go. So anyone, can, yeah. anyone who's interested can check. Yeah. That so out. if anybody's interested in that stuff, you know, that's available, but the actual canvases, which a lot of people would rather own than anything else, obviously. Yeah. I just don't want to, I, don't, I have no interest in selling so at, have this you, point, at this have point. You, have you still got the turd? The one, the one of the turd, the textured sure. turd. It's right here. <laughs> it is here really. <laughs> that's the one. I, I, it made me laugh when I, I was watching the film the other day, and I was like, "That's great." <laughs> Two of them. There's three. three it's called the, the, this trilogy. There's a trilogy. See. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, if if I get the pleasure to meet you in person, you know, I'll, I'll give you. I have an art. I'll give you an art book. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that'd be and, uh, I'm happy. I don't mind buying it. I'll buy it. Oh, okay, Get money for it. Okay, then I'll then I'll sell you one. No, hey, sell me one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're doing me a big favor by coming on the show, man. Oh no, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I've I, I feel I've, I met a really nice uh, nice dude here. Nice yeah. guy. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. It's very yeah. nice. Um, I'm glad you got the turds and you got more. Um, right, a couple of other. I think this sure. was sparked from. You may mention them in the movie. Uh, Dean Monaghan, who's from the US. He's asked, "What are your favorite Grand Funk Railroad album?" You, you oh, must cite yeah. them. In, so you must cite that as one of your musical influences or something. In, in I, the film. A, I love it. I love when somebody's asking me about Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, really? Wow! Yeah. yeah. He's asking you, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, uh, my favorite, my favorite one, or just one album, or whatever, whatever. Oh. What are your favorite few albums? Okay, they're easily uh, the Red Album. Okay, it's, it's it's known as the Red Album. He'll know what that is. He'll know. I don't know anything. Uh, just just okay. to be honest. Grand Funk. It's the Red Album. Closer to Home. Okay, and E Plurb is Funk. Sounds cool. Those three, it's a coin album. It looked like a coin. Okay. I'll say those those right off the top. Okay. And those, then those, could be, those are my three favorites. He's also asked favorite Black Oak Arkansas album. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, what um is uh, Hot Mass. I think it's called well, Live Ranch and Roll. I think the live album. It's a live album. Okay. And Hot Nasty's on it. What's that album that uh all, they're all sitting in the hay? I have no idea. No idea. Yeah, yeah. It's, I okay. don't know much they about it. cover with everybody sitting uh, in the hay. Okay, I'm sure he'll appreciate uh, uh, that. You'll check yeah. that out. <laughs> yeah, he, I think he, he's big into that stuff, so I think you'd be impressed by that. Yeah, no, I, that's great. That's old school stuff. Yeah, old, old, old school stuff, yeah. I need to go and check that out. Again, that's an, like it's another massive hole of music that I don't know anything about that I would probably love. I just haven't oh, you, you know, found you, it you, yet. Be, you being a musician yourself and a drummer and all that. Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, I'll yeah. You just go. You just be going. Wait, you don't know anything about Grand Funk Railroad? No, no. I know the name, and that's it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I know. Yeah, you would wow. discover right out the gate. You would discover a great drummer. Great. Okay. I will. Ch I'll check. Right. It out. Just right out. Right out the gate. Uh, Don Brewer is. He's another. He's. Get him on your show, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's still I mean, alive. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's still. He's still alive. He's. Yeah. He's out there. Yeah. If you can get him on your show, that'd be. <laughs> well, you'd be breaking some heavy ground, dude. Okay, well, it, it might be difficult. Right, amazing. Um, now it's time for the quick fire round. If you're cool, if you're cool with that, it's just a way for the listeners to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, you know, things maybe we haven't talked about yet. Some of them are difficult to answer. Some of them are easy. So just quick answers, if you can. Uh, you're looking for answers from me. Yeah, from you. Yeah. So, uh, okay, okay, quick, so. quick fire answers. Uh, what's your favorite food? Tacos. Uh, favorite movie? Uh, Spider Man. Oh Did no, I know I could go better than that. Uh, Papillon. Okay, uh, guitar or bass? Uh, guitar. Nylon or wood tip? 
Wood chip. Yeah. John Bonham or Neil Peart? John Bonham. Beatles or Rolling Stones? Ooh, I gotta say a tie on that. A tie. <laughs> a can't tie. lean one way. I can't lean. Well, I, I can I mean, that's just they're both so both worthy, so both worthy. <laughs> okay, um, I'll say the Stones. Okay, okay. Uh, big or small venue? Small. Favorite time signature to play? Five four. Five four. Good. I'm glad you came up with a good one. Most people just say four four. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite rhythm section ever? Whoa. Okay, that's that's too ambiguous. Rhythm like what? Rhythm as in drums, bass. Yeah, or, I'm sure. Or, like, I mean, or, or, or horn sections. Like what are, you, what are we talking? I kind of mean like a uh, drummer and bass player. Sorry, oh, okay. that's, I should specify. Okay, rhythm. Okay, okay. Uh, rhythm section. That one. Ooh, that's a. Um, okay, you know what? I'll, I'm gonna I'll throw something controversial. How about uh, Getty Lee and Neil Peart? That's not controversial at all, but uh, very good. No, <laughs> okay. enough, yeah. That's not controversial. Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it was controversial. If my, if my son hears that, he'll come right in and say uh, some <laughs> nasty things. <laughs> really? Okay. okay. Um, name an underrated band. It's not Anvil. I was just going to say Anvil. <laughs> Anvil's a perfect guy. Yeah, 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 it's a good point. Yeah, good I know what you mean. Anyone else? Oh, uh, your band. My band. Hey, there you go. Thank you. Phil, Phil Campbell and Bastard Sunset. That's it because they're uh, severely underrated. Fair enough. I'll take that. I'll take well, that. I mean, on this side of the world, nobody knows your band. No, I agree. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that, that's why. That's. Don't, I'm not speaking with disrespect. That's. No, I I know. Yeah, we need to. We do need. I, to I've I've gone around. I you know walking. I've, when I learned about your band a few years ago, I was you know my circle. I was turning people on. Right, going, man, you should hear these guys. Not one person knew who you were. Right. No. Just, no. Just, but I didn't either. So I mean, I'm I was I'm no different. No, it's different. It wasn't for the. It was in Germany though, where I got turned on to your band. But still, if that didn't happen, I I, probably, I don't know. You wouldn't know. We we might not be speaking. You never know. I, I you'd I'd have a you'd have a stranger. I know. I would have. I would have eventually. I, I'm a big Motorhead. I'm an old Motorhead fan. You know, okay. I like both. I like both phases of the band. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's with, the best with, way. The, with the original phase and the phase with your dad, right? Yeah. 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 I, like, I, love, I love both phases. They're two different bands to me. Yeah. Very yeah. different drummers as yeah. well. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Cool. Um, the favorite album of all time. Oh, I knew that was coming. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, just I'll, I'll say Black Sabbath, Master Reality. Nice, nice, nice. I like that one. Uh, favorite drummer <laughs> of all time. <laughs> okay, favorite. Well, at least you're using the word favorite. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll just go, Buddy Rich, Buddy Rich. Buddy, yeah. For me, Buddy Rich. Uh, Excellent. I, I, I'll stick with him. Yeah. He see, it sounds like he was a big influence to you. So. Good, good on you. Right. <laughs> this is the way I end every episode. And again, it's another difficult question, I'm afraid. But if you could start your own dream band, basically a dream band, yourself on the drums, without choosing members of Anvil, who would you have playing the other instruments? And they could be dead or alive. <coughs> oh, I've, had, I've been asked this before. Okay. Uh, um... Could I dream up today? Uh, okay, I'll say my dream band. Okay, I'll say uh, Rick Parfait on rhythm guitar. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, uh, I'll say Mick Ralphs on lead guitar. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll say Glenn Hughes as the vocalist. Good choice. And um, I don't know. Play, anybody can play bass. Uh, who do I want as a bass player? Um, I don't know. Man. <laughs> who do you want as a bass player? <laughs> There's so many guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah. I want a rock and roll guy. Okay, how about the guy? Uh, 
I'll take uh, Tony Stevens from Fargo. Ah, interesting. There you go. I like that. Huh? It's a bit of a different. Uh, How's that for fucked up? <laughs> Any other drums? Yeah, well, that's cool. It's very cool, mate. That's really good. Oh, that's amazing, man. Thanks for the contribution <laughs> there. I hope, you, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I've enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I've had a great time, man. It's a shame, uh, long time. It's a shame we yeah. live so far away and we can't do this in person, but maybe one day we'll... It's all good, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for asking me. I had a great chat with you. Mm, yeah. yeah, we'll keep in touch. Yeah. I, look, I look forward to <laughs> meeting up with you yeah. somewhere on the road. Somewhere, if, if it's on the road. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll definitely check... <laughs> I hope you're okay there with the coughing. Oh yeah, I'm fine. I'll check. Um, I'll check your UK tour dates just in case I'm still home. But yeah, I, well, I can tell you right now, it's it's October one to October nineteenth, I believe, or twentieth. You never know. We might be lucky at the start of the month. I might be home at the start of the month. Um, it's gonna so be. I, you know, if you're following the Facebook thing, they're gonna be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do they call those? The banners. Banners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're gonna be coming up. So they'll, they'll be. I'll post, they'll post them up. Great, man. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. Have a great hey, day. Nice, nice meeting you. Thanks yeah. for everything. You stay well. Keep rocking, my friend. I certainly will. And you. And good luck with the album release. I'll certainly be checking it out. And uh, yeah. Yeah. April Have 21. Great... There's, a, there's a, a lyric video uh, coming out. Yeah, that's the, that's the new one to look out for. Great. All right. Cheers, Rob. Okay. See you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Run for the song podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode of Drum for the Song podcast. If you've enjoyed this, please consider liking the video and subscribing if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and follow wherever you get your podcasts. If you could leave me a review or comment, that would be fantastic too, as it helps other people discover this show. Please also consider sharing this with any family members or friends who might enjoy the content. You can also follow me on social media at Dane underscore drums or at drum for the song or search for drum for the song on Facebook to follow the page and join the official Facebook group. If you'd like to support the podcast, you could purchase some merchandise from drumforthesong.com or consider supporting me via Patreon from just £3 per month for additional exclusive content like bonus episodes video calls with myself, competitions, discounts, and much more. Any additional support is always greatly appreciated, but I would like to give extra special thanks to my top-tier Groove Master patrons, whose names are listed in the description below. My name is Dane Campbell, and thanks so much for watching or listening this far. If you're a drummer, don't forget to drum for the song! <laughs>